Hey, good evening, everyone. My name is Tracy Lee. Um, a lot of you probably know me or recognize me from Tracy and Jared, and uh, this is going to be just me tonight. Jared's here. He's upstairs and helping share the live feed, and we might be around later. But I'm really excited because uh, tomorrow I will be going um, live feed video live to China. I have to wake up at 4 in the morning um, <laughs> in front of 2,000 plus people to start um, promoting and sharing the work that Jared and myself and Al Diaz were going to be doing um, while we're in Beijing this winter. And a lot of you guys have been watching for a while and you've been asking questions, um, you know, what's 1358, what it's all about. And, uh, and so I just wanted to go into a little bit of that tonight and share with you guys uh, some of the original work that I do. And then for some of the new people who might watch this video later or who may be tuning in for the first time, just to share a little bit about my story and my journey. And uh, <laughs> hi, Cheetos. And uh, just to give you guys a little bit of background. Um, I'll do a real quick uh, kind of recap about how I got to be where I am. Uh, in, in 2012, I went through some really nasty events, um, even struggled with some low vibration drugs for a short period of time, and in the wake of some nasty things that happened, went through a really intense spiritual awakening that happened hard and fast. And it wasn't long before I was one of these people who started peeking through the door and looking and looking and looking. Curious type. And it wasn't long before I started to make new discoveries. And in 2000, just in 2015, uh, last year, I, I got my first opportunity to, um, to go work abroad. And this was uh, Masumi Uragami, a voice company, discovered me out of Japan. And I've been to Japan twice and then uh, traveled, over to, um, traveled over to China. I'll be going there back to China again. But anyway, um, here's the, I'd like to share with you the story of how 1358 came to be. And then um, I'll talk to you a little bit about what it means and what it represents. When I was making my first ever presentation in Japan, I was a little nervous, uh, probably like, I don't know, maybe 40, 50 people were in the room. And I was, uh, I had a diagram with the seven chakras and this is your body's energy. And um, even though I had a lot of original work that was mine, um, it was kind of mixed in with other people's work, kind of reteaching up versions of other people's work and starting to channel my own work and starting to understand who I am as a spiritual, um, person and channel and, and a teacher. So I was up there and I was about to start talking about energy and I'm sitting there I'm looking there at this diagram of chakras and then this huge channel just hit me and I this was one of my first ever live presentations So I was like, what do I do? Um, you know, do I continue with my live presentation or I just go with a channel? So I was like, fuck it I'm just gonna go with what hit me. So I uh, The chakra model is a big poster. I mean it was like half the size of me. I literally tore the chakra model um, off of the board. I mean, I ripped it off. It was laminated and they made a big deal out of laminating. I said, I'm sorry guys, I have to stop. Tore it off the wall. I said, this is all wrong. It's completely wrong. Um, this is new information just coming channel to me now. This is what I said to my group that had paid to come to my seminar. I said, no, this is wrong. We, ha we, can we have to stop practicing this. And that's when I first started to share um, information about 1358 and what it meant. Um, and since then, um, you know, things Validation comes in all different ways, and I'd like to pause for just a second and say thank you um, before I get started to some of the um, really key people who have played an awesome part in this journey. Of course, um, first I'll always thank first Masumi Uragami from Japan for giving me my first ever international opportunity, and then um, second, huge thank to Jared Sullivan, who's upstairs. And I'm kind of a, <laughs> I can be kind of mean sometimes, but Jared, um, love you and appreciate you and everything um, that you do. <clears throat> do and putting up with me and all this stuff and uh, wanted to take a chance to say that also a huge thank you and shout out to um, Gabriel Espinoza who um, Flew all the way to Hawaii to meet me and gave me some of the some incredible validation and inspiration to keep um, Keep my work on going and uh, without uh, without that validation I mean, it's not to say that nothing would ever happen But I really just I it's really it's been an important part of my journey and then recently, of course, Michael Cavanaugh, Grandpa MK, who's come up um, and even gave more validation. So as we continue these, um, this journey and we keep moving forward, you know, validation comes through people, it comes through events, it comes through numbers. And I just want to make sure that all the people who have played a part of this know how much I do appreciate them. So, and of course, I appreciate all the people who watch uh, Tracy and Jared also. So, um, and I know this audience might be a little smaller tonight because we're not doing readings, but I still want to make sure this video gets out there and that um, those of you who appreciate it and like it, if you want to take the time to share it and, um, and what it's all about. And at the end, I'll take some questions. All right. Um, so 1358. Um, 
So like I said, this came to me as a result of knowing the current, sh current chakra model was wrong. If you practice Reiki and if you're someone who's bought into Reiki, look at this chakra model, all right? There's inherent hypocrisy ingrained into this stacked model. And, and, I, wanna, and I wanna do this as respectfully as possible, but people are always talking about raising their vibrations. Let's make our vibration as high as possible. Um, let's vibrate high. How do I raise my vibration? How do I connect with ETs? How do I get to 12D, 8D, all of these types of things? All right, well, in the Reiki or in the seven chakra model, the root chakra, um, you know, is tuned to around 300 hertz and the chakras move up until about the crown chakra, which is tuned to about um, 900 or 925 hertz. And this is inherent hypocrisy. So why are we intentionally tuning our bodies to levels that are um, intentionally lower than one part is lower than the other? Does it make any sense? Why not just tune the entire body to a single resonance? Which brings me to my second point is the body is a unit. Our carbon, carbon capsules are a unit and we want this unit to vibrate and work as a synergistic, harmonious, um, self-sustaining unit. So all of us are gonna be built differently. Um, so if you've got a strong heart you want, and you've got extra vibration there, you wanna be able to share that vibration with the, uh, you know, with the weaker parts of your body. So it's like a pulley system, push and pull and share energy um, all across the body. So we wanna first um, learn to vibrate at a single resonance, then learn to raise this resonance and the key number I'm gonna give you guys tonight is around 1,000 to 1,100 hertz. And when I started investigating, I ran into, um, uh, you know, of course, a lot of people know the work of Roy Reif. And he came up with the list of MORs, or mortal oscillatory resonances. And this is a list of numbers. And these numbers sh um, share the vibration at which different illnesses will just burst and shatter. Kind of like when an opera singer will sing, oh, and shatter glass everything has a vibration at which it will dissipate and shatter. So Roy Reif um, found that most cancers um, will shatter oh, around between 1,000 and 1,100 hertz. Now, why are we using Reiki in this um, old school model to intentionally tune ourselves to a frequency that's lower um, than cancer? So I'm not saying that Reiki causes cancer. I'm not saying that Reiki is evil or satanic. If you do, um, you know, people ask me, if, you, if I do yoga, does that mean I'm, no. Not, nothing's wrong with any of this. What I'm saying is we must do better. Okay, a thousand hertz is not high enough. And when we learn to raise our vibration and frequency over a thousand, over 1100 hertz, then we can start tapping into our true conscious potential. And this is what 1358 is all about. Um, and this is just, uh, and, and the human chakras and the meridians, and if you see me looking down, I've just, I've got a bullet list I'm looking at here. Um, these are human creations, all right? And I know there's Carillion detectors and all these things that people look at to say, uh, well, this is what my chakra model says. It's this is, it's, it's, it's not completely BS, but it's like I said, it's not good enough. And the model that I've composed and have been working on and improving on and continuing to channel um, is what I believe one step in helping humanity um, take the next step to achieving its conscious potential. Um, so I told you guys how I channeled 1358 um, and where it first came in. Now let me tell you a little bit about um, what I think 1358 is. Okay, 1358 is not just a vibration. It's not just a resonance. Okay, um, it is. It's part of. It's part of source code, and Gabriel Espinoza helped me to recognize this. Okay, it's part of. Part of source code. It's part of the God's code, and um, I believe that this vibration contains the sacred energy that was um, that of Atlantis, or the sacred element of Atlantis that some people have previously referred to as Ori Halcom. All right, and during the times of Atlantis, I believe that this element was used to, uh, you know, for health, um, medicine, for wealth, for anti-gravity, for, um, you know, for space travel, um, you know, for technology, for all kinds of, for infrastructure, for, for all kinds of things. And I believe that we still, that this is a non-earthly element, the vibration that I'm tapping into anyway of 1358. It's a non-earthly element. Um, that is still used by what I believe the elite or the shadow governments or the secret whoever is doing whatever they're doing underground and they're making technology that's better than we have and making us go to war over oil and gas and fight each other um, and cause all this bullshit. They know about this vibration. They know about this. And I'm not saying they call it 1358, but they know about it. Um, they use the vibration of it. Um, they know the technology. They know its potential. And they keep it from everybody. Um, and this is why Reiki is so, you know, it's so pushed and it's so circulated because Reiki creates a vibrational ceiling. 
But once we break free of that ceiling and we start breaking through 1,000, 1,100, 1,358 is just a marking point. I'm not saying this is the be end and end all, okay? But it is part of uh, source code and cosmic code. And it is a great stopping point for us to break through that vibrational ceiling that so many people of the last generation of light workers are um, kind of entrapping us in, which is, you know, this uh, fourth and fifth dimension. Um, you know, if you're, if you're still looking into four and five, you got to move on. All right, 5D, all this stuff, Arctic Angels, astral travel, all this stuff. We have to move past that. That's why with my work with 1358, uh, there's all new words for everything, for the Merkaba, for the um, chakras, which I've called Tani, all new words, even for the word Akashic, because the word Akashic, even the Akashic records tap into an energetic space that has a vibrational ceiling. We all have, um, and Jared has termed, uh, had the term xenogene records, which um, Jared is doing, and I'm doing past life readings, calling them xenogene instead of Akashic, because there is a higher vibrational space that we can tap into our DNA records and our, and our cosmic history. And we have to kind of recoin these phrases so people can break free of this ceiling. Um, moving on, um, 1358, it's like I said, it's, a, it's not a destination. It's also a process. And it's a very, very, very simple process, but it's so complex, all right? Um, one, three, five, eight. Truth, freedom, love, consciousness. One, truth, three, freedom, uh, five, love, eight, consciousness. Now, we can spend hours going into the numerology and deciphering what this all means, um, but getting into those details are something I'll do over the course of my four-day course that I teach, but it's not something I'm necessarily interested in diving into now. But it is a process, and we repeat this process over and over. Truth, freedom, love, consciousness. Um, and what it does is it allows us to deprogram, and I'm going to say it again, deprogram the reptilian cortex of our brain. Um, and now that I've said reptilian cortex, I'm going to pause again for story time to tell you guys a little bit of what, about what I've channeled with regards to the reptilian cortex, okay? Um, I believe that in the beginning there were dragons and angels, Levarians and Aurelians, all right? Dragons, there were several lineages, the Aurelians um, also lineages, somewhere along the line, Okay, the dragons gave birth to the serpent race. There was another dragon race. And this dragon race that was parallel to the serpent race crossbred with the angel race. And during the process of this crossbreeding, um, activated a recessive type of gene that um, disabled the capacity to experience empathy. And this is what we know now as the reptilians who are disempathetic. So no, reptilians are not the same thing as dragons. They derive from dragons, but they're not the same thing as dragons. But continuing the relevance of the story, um, what happened was that humans were created by um, a race or a species of reptilians and were put here with this reptilian cortex to create what? A vibrational ceiling, okay? And that's that vibrational ceiling of the chakras of Reiki um, and whatnot. And what happens is when we become traumatized, when we uh, have anxiety or worry, we respond with what? Fight or flight. Hey, everybody knows about fight versus flight. Fight means you want to just cause this argument or you just want to cause a disruption every time you feel stress. Flight means you're just the person who runs away, you drive away, you go in your closet, curl up in a little circle, what have you, all right? But the way that we over time deprogram this reptilian cortex is we learn to navigate through, I said it, through fight versus flight, meaning in the face of adversity, in the face of trauma, all right, we don't have to choose fight or flight. We, there is a middle path. And I believe the middle path is learning 1358, which is the truth, freedom, love. All right. And when we start asking ourselves, all right, the base of the issue is how do we lie to ourselves? What kind of lies do we allow other people to tell ourselves? There isn't truth. Um, in freedom, freedom is the absence of control. How do you control other people? How do you allow other people to control you? How obsessed with you are, how obsessed are you with controlling your own future? Um, do you try to control other people's future? Are you able to live in the moment? Then we move to love, and this is an extremely abbreviated version of these teachings, but I want to make sure I cover everything here before I lose any attention. Um, we move to love. Love is the absence of fear. So um, you have fear of death, fear of being broke, fear of unemployment, fear of somebody losing you. What, what, are, we, what are you scared of? Um, you experience fear. This, this, is what, this is the ultimate block of um, expansion of consciousness. And guess what? Every time we climb that ladder, truth, freedom, love, and we expand our consciousness, guess what happens? You go all the way back to the beginning, you start all over again with number one, which is what? Truth. And so we keep climbing this ladder, going up, climbing a ladder, going up, over and over and over again. And this is the process of 1358. But it teaches um, over time to navigate through issues 
without trauma-based responses that are a natural response to us because of the way our DNA is made and encoded through the reptilian cortex of the brain that was activated, like I said, through a recessive activation um, that what, what, what has a result of the Aurelians uh, and a um, reptilian species breeding a very, 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 very long time ago. Crazy story. I channeled it. I have plenty of validation. I don't have scientific proof. I'm just sharing um, what's come through me, and it's helped a lot of people. Um, and the people in China, I'm telling you, you guys are loving it. Uh, are they're loving it? And I, you know, I have clients, and the, the trainings usually take about two hours each. Um, you know, and we'll do four of them. We can take you through the whole 1358 process. And over time, we can learn to deactivate the reptilian cortex of the brain. Deactivate it, meaning we're no longer like a reptilians. And when we learn to deactivate this and not vibrate in 4D and 5D, then we can start to ascend into 8D. We can start to see our light body seep through our cells. We can live longer. We can float. We can do all the things that Tesla envisioned for us and, and for our society. But it has to happen one step at a time, and it all has to start with truth. Um, so moving on, um, let's see, I don't want to miss anything here. <laughs> and let's see, da -da -da -da. you know, a lot of people, I want to touch on this too, um, hyper, Ooh, sorry, um, hypervigilance. Um, hypervigilance is, uh, is a sign, and I've gone through this myself, um, it's a symptom of post-traumatic stress. And ex the, just the experience of post-traumatic stress is, it, is in itself a fight or flight reptilian programmed um, activity. So if you are a victim, and I do say victim of post-traumatic stress, 1358 is for you. If you experience chemical dependency, 1358 is for you. If you are worried and always try to control the future, 1358 is for you, okay? Uh, 1358 is everybody because we all have to learn to deep program this part of our brains that's keeping us vibrating at this low level. Stop tuning your ground or your, what do you call it, root chakra to 300 hertz intentionally and connecting yourself to the earth because how are you going to fly, right? We have to vibrate all at one resonance um, as the whole body and learn to raise the vibration so that we can reach out there and come back down here at will. Um, I want to touch briefly on the concept of Merkaba because this is something that comes up too. People ask, well, what about, you know, the Merkaba? Is there a synthetic Merkaba, authentic Merkaba? What's a Merkaba? So... The word Merkaba in itself um, is something that I've re-coined and re-channeled through the 1358 um, um, ideas and energy system. And the word that I've come up with is Nizi. And it's interesting because I later found out that there's a Sanskrit word that sounds really similar to that called Nadi or something, which is like the source energy that we keep um, right below, it's housed below our navel. And here's why I don't like the word Merkaba. Um, all right, by definition, Merkaba is impossible because a Merkaba represents perfect symmetry. And if everything is always moving all the time, then by definition, it's impossible to have perfect symmetry because as one part moves, another part moves, and in that split second, the perfect symmetry is destroyed. However, what I do believe is that we all are part of source. We all came from source. And so even though we have imperfections in our skin, in our head, our brain, and the way we act and the way we think, all of us have this one little perfect part inside us, like I said, that we keep housed beneath the navel that I call the Nizi. And we can learn to activate this source light energy that's stayed with our souls for all of our eternity through life after life. Um, Jared and I both um, teach Nizi activation. Um, he's, he did his even without, I mean, without me even telling him about it. We've kind of called it separate things. But, and you'll see a lot of like the elite or Illuminati or whatever, they take these things and they put it over their, their navel. That's what that is. They know what's underneath there. Okay, they know what's underneath the navel. That's where you have to be meditating from and activating from, from beneath the belly button, not from the heart, not from the head. It has to happen from, this is where that sacred energy lies. Okay, um, and one other fallacy I want to address tonight is this. Nobody, and I mean nobody, no light worker, no healer, no miracle worker, no pagan, no anybody can do anything to your Nizi or Merkaba besides you. So anybody who is selling Merkaba activations, teaching about Merkaba activations, telling you that they can do something to your Merkaba is absolutely 100% full of bullshit. And I'm very sorry if that offends anybody, but it's true. Because this is your part that came from source. It's like a gift from God. All right, nobody can touch your gift from God besides yourself. All right, Merkaba activations are absolute 100% fucking bullshit. And excuse me for getting upset for a second, but this is one of the biggest pieces of bullshit that I've ever seen advertised in the lightworker world. Lightworker activations, I'll say it again, of Merkabas are bullshit. Nobody can touch this. This is yours, okay? A healer can 
send you vibration. They can help you uh, learn to activate energies. Healers can do all kinds of wonderful things. Jared and I both work as healers. But when it comes to messing with the part of you that came straight from source, the only person who can do anything to that, activate it, upgrade it, inspire it, light it, ignite it, whatever you want to call it, the only person who can do that is you. All right? And never forget that. Never, never, ever, ever forget that because this is your gift from God. And, and people ask, like, how do, I, how do I activate it? Set the intent to do so. Um, put your hands over that part of your body and start to feel warmth. Start to feel tingling. Ask for a sign, receive the sign, and then express gratitude. All right? And that's stuff that I get into during the course, too. Um, make sure that... Uh... Oh, and the last thing that I wanted to go over... Uh, I want to make sure I don't miss anything here. Um, thank you to Gabriel Espinosa again for uh, um, some of the validation that I received through being introduced to your work because uh, there's a concept that I started to channel. Um, I don't know, it's been almost two years now, and this concept of Rosie. And a lot of you guys see Rosie you know, around my neck. You've seen her on my Facebook wall. You've seen her everywhere. And I met Rosie, and she came to me as like a female kind of octopus thing. And, you know, you feel like the tentacles on the head. She's been a beautiful guide. And every large audience I've talked to has loved Rosie. People, feel, people who have never had spiritual experiences ever before have had them with Rosie. It's crazy. Like she'll, people will see an octopus like on a, you know, on a picture or it'll come in a dream or anything. She will find, find a way to find you. And what I found through looking at Gabriel's work, and it was beautiful validation, is that, um, uh, Rosie is the embodiment of the divine female essence, or what some people call as the pleroma. Or, um, you know, in this, in this age of Aquarius, the um, coming of the new divine feminine, Rosie is the embodiment of that. And so we start to ask ourselves, what is the divine feminine? All right? It's power, it's perseverance, but it's delicacy also. Um, but it's, it, it's delicacy and, and diligence. It's a certain touch of flair and feistiness, but with also with a, with a gentle touch. And that's everything that the divine feminine represents. You know, this drive, this willingness to always get back up your, off your feet no matter what. And now we are in the age of Aquarius. We are in the age of the divine feminine. And, um, and Rosie is a, is a huge part because, um, and I'd like to share this experience for the first time publicly ever right now. Um, I had never previously been able to, I've had several trips, really crazy lucid trips, where I've come real close to where I think is like the veil. Um, talked to several people who have um, you know, had experiences one way or the other on the other side of it. But uh, very recently, I had my very, 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 very first experience where I'm 100% sure that I saw what's on the other side of there. And the first thing I saw was Rosie. And she was turned on her side, okay? And I don't know exactly what this means yet, just sharing. She was turned on her side with her tentacles this way and her head this way. And as she pierced through... Um, Gabriel talks in his work about the cubits, right, and, um, you know, about the single cube in the one side, and it notices it re is a reflection, so it has a need to reproduce, and then, you know, as the cubits keep performing. So what I saw was Rosie go through a cubit, through a cube, and pierce like an octagon-shaped hole through the cube. Um, but what happened was, it's like there was an octagon-shaped hole, and then as the other cubits behind were trying to move forward, um, the, okay, the, the, cubit, the cubit is the shape of a, of a square on each side. And so the, there were little triangles that were left on top. And so it's like the cube moved through, and then there was like these little triangles that were left from the, part, the octagon, hedron, or whatever you call it, to move backward. So that there is this push forward and pull backward. And what I saw was this divine feminine what was creating this push and pull. And that's so freaking cool to see that like it's the feminine energy that creates the push and pull. Um, of the universe, of the cosmos. It's not the male energy. It's not the man, okay? It's the woman, all right? And this is, we're coming into age of Aquarius and all this information is coming right on time. Um, this is the age of the woman. I mean, look, you even, almost even had a woman president. I don't want to go there because Hillary, ugh. Um, you know, I don't, that was a horrible thing to say, but, but yeah, age of the woman, woman power. But it's not just about woman, all right? Men too are going to learn to embody the beauty of this divine feminine energy. And how are men going to embody that? By learning to be more gentle, more understanding, more compassionate, more forgiving, uh, even more forgiving to themselves sometimes. And this is the essence of the divine feminine um, as we are in this age of enlightenment and as we are all continuing to, um, to wake up and, and come into, like I said, what has to be, what must be our newest conscious potential. Um, and I'm going to repeat the process again of 1358. 1358, uh, truth, freedom, 
love consciousness. It's a process, repeats over and over amongst so many levels. Other key point from tonight, Reiki, we got to shove it under the table, all right? It was beautiful for the past, but it's creating a vibrational ceiling and we must do better. 900 hertz at the crown chakra, guys, not enough when cancer is vibrating at 1,000, cancer is vibrating at 1,100. We have to vibrate higher, all right? Not to say that it's bad, not to say it's going to hurt you. It doesn't cause cancer, but we have to come up with a system to teach our bodies to vibrate higher. And going back to the concept of the Merkaba, uh, we are eternally in a race, all right? with the synthetic and the authentic Merkaba. Damn right they're creating one somewhere fucking in a secret military island underneath the ocean guarded by crazy ETs. It's happening, it's true. And if the, if the synthetic Merkaba takes life and uh, starts to, it's almost like Skynet. If it happens before we start to, it's a race. If it beats us, we're fucked like Atlantis and it's gonna blow up all over again and create a huge ripple in space time and all these horrible things. But it doesn't have to be that way. It does not have to be that way. All we have to do is everybody has to do their part to learn to vibrate higher. And everybody's individual duty is just to learn. Keep learning, keep growing. Don't believe anything anybody tells you. Don't even believe anything I tell you. Do your own investigating. Um, feel what feels right to you. And don't just read or subscribe or follow anybody. Don't ever listen to anybody who says they will activate your Merkaba, all right? Um, so many people ask how to find an energy healer. Use your intuition, please. Use your intuition, use your, um, use your divine feminine energy because that's another part of divine feminine is just this knowing. We just know. We can sniff a liar, you know? Women, we sniff liars. You can't lie to, li you can't li lie to some of us. Uh, as MK, Grandpa MK said, like, he said, you know, Tracy, you're a daughter of mom. Meaning like, you know, you come from the family of the divine feminine. Um, and it's, it's not like in an elite money sense. It's just in a, it's just in a um, hierological, hierological um, you know, cosmic sense. Um, and yeah, you can't lie and you can't fuck with the daughters of mom. So I'm not scared about you know, talk, sharing my stuff or going around. And I'm super excited to be taking Jared and Al Diaz, uh, both of you guys with me, to China over Christmas. We're leaving on uh, December 25th and we'll be back January 10th. Um, Woo, go Jared. Go Jared. Uh, Look, guys, we'd love to have, be more active in the continental United States. We have a website, area1358.com. We have a GoFundMe. If you want to support us, please help. Throw in five bucks or ten bucks. Like, you know, we're not making a killing doing this, but we're, we damn sure do believe in what it is that we're doing, and we do try to help people. We spend our nights, we spend our mornings doing free stuff, and those who can afford to help, help. Those who can't, we still try to help anyway the best we can. So we'll share the link to the GoFundMe. Uh, we've got services for sale, um, area1358.com. Jared and I have our live feeds and readings. And I want to say, again, huge thank you to Jared for everything and for putting up with me. And, uh, <laughs> and a huge thank you to um, Masumi Origami for giving my first ever international inter um, opportunity. Huge thank you to Gabriel Espinosa um, for the inspiration and for the validation and guidance. And also huge thank you to Michael Cavanaugh, Grandpa MK, for coming by here and giving even more um, uh, validation for what's going on. This stuff. Uh, and of, oh, and thank you. And of course, huge shout out to my brother, Al Diaz, um, brother from another cosmic mother who has joined our team. And Al does amazing work. Check him out. He's the guide, Al Diaz. Um, just type that in. You'll see him. He's the big you know, strong, serious looking dudes. He always wears a suit, but I tell him when he works on our team with China, no suits. Um, I was going to say one more thing and then Jared interrupted me. For Al. Oh, yeah, for Al. But I want to say this, guys. The validation that's come through for this is like out of this world. Like I didn't, you know, you ask, when you channel stuff, you ask for validation. It keeps getting validated over and over. This is not going away. All right. So don't go away. Listen to what we have to say. Uh, point your finger and call bullshit, uh, whatever you want to do, but just keep listening. Don't block, just watch and uh, look from a distance. And if you don't like it, it's not for everybody. It's all good. We still love you. But uh, keep looking, keep watching. Uh, send an angry face, send a happy face, send whatever you want to send. Send a dollar, send a hundred bucks. We're still going to keep moving, like we're going to keep moving. And uh, I think that's it for this um, share. I know Jared and I will, if we don't do a uh, reading session tonight, we'll be back on tomorrow to do it. And Thank you guys so much for everybody who's uh, been watching and uh, keep, keep moving forward, keep learning and keep listening to yourself and uh, don't go away mad, just go away. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, love you guys, peace.